Oh, geez. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Um, okay. So go up here to source, add source. Okay. So um, professional genealogists have to use these templates. These templates can come in handy, um, but they are not required for family historians. Um, the issue with the templates that you need to be aware of and professional genealogists need to be aware of also is that there are some fields that will not sync to Ancestry because Ancestry doesn't have those fields available they dump that extra data into the person notes on Ancestry. So that's important to note. Um, so I don't use them because this basic template, this is the basic template that we talk about in the group. This has everything I need for all of my sources when I create an additional source. So every source has to have a title. Um, so it needs to be not the person, not the um, not the details that are in the citation. It needs to be something like something a little bit more general, so that you, if you wind up with more records from the same source, the same book, the same um, even a website. Um, so. For example, um, when we use FamilySearch, FamilySearch creates their own, their own source. Um, but you can have anything here. Um, I have one that's personal knowledge where I um, entered that, for example, that my daughter and her husband will not be having any children. So I put in there that um, there were no children from this and added a citation so I could explain how I knew that there would be no children from this marriage. So um, rather than just putting it out there that there were no children. So, um, so for this one, I'm just going to do meeting test, okay? And um, for books, for um, for books, certain um, um, articles that you find online, they all need to be. You need to make sure that you credit the author. If there's a publisher, location, publish date, that all needs to go in here. You need to make sure that you are always properly crediting that source. You need to make sure that you know where it came from and that future researchers or even current ones know exactly where that came from and who it's attributed to. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put myself in here. Okay, now here we'll talk about repositories. Now, um, there's two schools of thought on this. So I will tell you my, how I do it. And then I'm gonna let somebody else explain why they, why they credit ancestry rather than doing it the same way that I do. So, um, because they can best explain that. So the repository is where the original document lives. Um, and it, now remember, this is just my opinion. The, to my way of thinking, it's where the original document lives so that current researchers, future researchers, or even myself know where to go find the original document if we want to. Ancestry only has images. Family Search has images and they have some records. So I give, I credit Family Search for those. But usually, um, it looks like I do have a, one here for Ancestry, but I'm not using it. Um, but 
your, but when you go into a record, it will show if you go into the source down underneath the record, it will show you the sources and it will tell you exactly where this document actually lives. So, um, so this is, you can kind of get an idea of some of mine. I do not credit ancestry with anything because it's only the image. It's not the actual record. So you can kind of see, I mean, it's really long, <laughs> but so you get an idea. Um, so for my census, they are all accredited to the Census Bureau or the National <laughs> Archives for US Census um, as appropriate. Um, so there are some that I have that are none. Um, those are for things like books that can be found in any library um, or found in on Google Books or, you know, they can be found anywhere. Um, so anything that can be found very easily, um, I just do none. Uh, but most of them, the vast majority of my of my sources have an actual have an actual um, place where the the original record is kept. Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to anybody who would like to explain why they use ancestry because there is it's not wrong. Um, it's just a different way of looking at it. So will someone please? Does anybody do that? And will they please speak up? Don't forget to unmute yourself. Um, I'll give my two cents. Please do. Um, and the reason I use it, um, uh, the reason I use Ancestry is because that's where I got the data. So I'm looking at their image or what they translated. I didn't see the original document. And so if I say it's in the 1920 census, you know, held at the library, I didn't look at that. I just looked at their capture of the image. And in some cases, I'm looking only at what they interpreted. And if I'm able to look at it more closely, I might say, oh, they said it's Celia, but I think it's Clara, you know, or whatever. So that's, that's why I do it. So I remember if, if I want to go back and look at this again, I saw it on Ancestry. And then if I were to actually find it someplace else, I would change it. Yeah. So that's what I do. I, I um, like to add um, mm. that um, I found it on Ancestry. I like to add that to the citation. Um, but okay. neither way is wrong or right. So it's all up to you. I, like I said, it's not right or wrong either way. It's up to you. Just try to be consistent mm -hmm. um, so that you can follow your own logic through, through the whole thing. The call number, that's for books. You're all familiar with those. And comments, um, Ancestry will often add this. It's often italicized, you know, parts of it. Um, and But for ones that I manually add, um, in here I will add any other little details that I think are relevant, such as if it is a what seems to be a long standing, long running website, then I will include that in here. And then also, um, oh, and one of the things I do add to my citations to go back to the repository thing issue again, is um, I include the date access, the date I accessed it. So just another, but you can also include that here if you'd like. Any questions? Yes, uh, question, Nancy. This is Roger. Um, so, for example, if you have personal copies of family birth certificates, the actual birth certificates, would you just create a source called birth certificates and then use that as the um, as the as the uh, source and then have citations to individual birth certificates? You could. I have mine under personal knowledge. No, ah. I, have that, I have that under personal holdings. Um, but yeah, that is absolutely okay. So it just need, you just need to keep them organized so that you can find them later if you need them. 
That's also why we add the name to the citation is so you can very easily find it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, one other thought is for those birth certificates that you also got, you could also put, you know, where you got that from. You know, you got it from, you know, the state or, you know, county records. No, hand um, it down. You know, so it's like, so that's another possible location, so. I include who gave it to me. Um, you know, if it was a copy of their birth certificate, you know, I'll say that 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 James W. Newell, um, 1941, to um, gave me a copy of his birth certificate on or about this date. Um, I'll do things like that, or for my daughter's uh, birth certificate. Um, those are, I have in my personal holdings and I, um, include in that, that, um, that they are, that the birth certificate, the certificate is for my daughter and that I have a copy of that. So but that information like that. then is in the citation, not yeah. the source. Right. Exactly. All the details. Okay. Question. Go ahead. Um, I hope this isn't too complicated. Okay, I do not speak Polish, but I use this Genetica um, Polish indexing, um, which they it translates to English to get um, birth birth certificates and death certificates. But then that Janiteka also on this source credits the state of Poland's website. And then they also credit the archives where the record actually goes. And I mean, most people aren't gonna go to Poland to get that. So I know it's the original would be the actual little villages in Poland, but most people aren't gonna go there. So. I want to figure out exactly if I should do all three of them because I got about 25 records that I need to upload to Ancestry. So, okay, so those I would do a single source, maybe Polish certificate. Um, I think I have one that are for German certificates and I have to go through, the, I, use a, I use a thing to help me translate German. Um, although I'm getting better at German, um, my grandmother would be so pleased, uh, but, but um, you're going to need to do each certificate, and then for the repository, I would, I would put where the document actually lived, and don't forget that your research will live on long after you do, so and you have Polish, Polish relatives, they may want to go and get the certificate. So we can't ever discount that. So we have to think about the future too. Um, so, and I have had German relatives go to the archive to get a copy of something. So, Keep that in mind so that your, your citation needs to be able to steer them or you, if you ever go to Poland, um, steer you to the place where you can get that, where you can lay hands on that copy, the original. Okay, okay, thank you. So actually including both websites and where it actually lives would be the best I thing. Would. The I would. The English website, the Polish website, and then the village. I would. I okay, would. thank you. You can't ever put too much detail into a citation. So it needs to say where you got the information um, and where that where that record lives in my opinion so that's 
that's how I do it, or you can just cite Ancestry, you can just cite just the website, you can use the website as a repository if you want to. Whatever you decide to do, um, just make sure that your citation steers you or a future researcher to where that record actually lives. All right. Any questions at this point? No? Okay, let's add a citation. All right, so I am up here in the corner, up here in the right-hand corner, we're using the add button. So I'm gonna add. So here's the title that I just created, right? It's over here under source title. This is the title I just created. Now I can enter the details. So I'm going to just enter it as if I would another record. So um, and this is 27 January. But yeah. Um, place. And um, and we'll leave it at that. Okay. And here. So I use the citation detail box for my citations. I a lot of users will use this box for other details. Maybe this is where you could put those websites. Um, or, you know, and, ex and explain some both websites and, um, but, um, or you could put the translation here. A lot of users use this for a record translation. Um, it's okay, any which way you wanna do it. Um, I will say Ancestry bumps, puts the record for when they add the name. They they start it down here in citation text, but I don't agree with Ancestry on the way they do their citations in the first place. So anyway, um, but you can use this for for additional details. Um, I just put it all up here. What do you use this box for? Anybody? My professionals? Yeah. Nobody? Okay. So, all right. Now, um, oh, and this is where um, I make sure that the web address for the record on Ancestry is here um, so that I know where that record is on Ancestry. Um, and it's included in the citation. So I'm just going to put, this will be a dead link, but um, okay. All right. So um, I always include the web address. If you are manually adding citations, Make sure you do this so that the so that if you want to go back to that record on a website, that it will go directly to that. So you have the website address in here. Okay, so I click OK. All right, now, now. The citation is over here. If I had included text, it would be here. You can go back and add more, add more text, or add text here if you'd like, and it will change your reference note. Your reference note is basically endnotes and reports, um, it, endnotes in a book or footnotes, um, it's very important 
that um, that that is included so that you have the entire citation here. Any questions? Okay, moving on. Now, now, see. Go ahead. Um, I think you meant to put. I think you meant to put twenty twenty two there, not twenty twenty. <laughs> well, what may, well, twenty twenty wasn't any better. So anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So now if I want to add this to an existing to an existing fact that I have in my tree, okay? So I'm going to go up here and let's see if this works because oh it doesn't always. Okay, so I'm going to go down to me down here in the tree. I have lots of noodles. Okay. Excuse me, Nancy, where did you get that screen? Okay, I'll do that again. Down here at new, down here in this bottom link, this will show us where all the links are. Everybody okay. see that but down here in the bottom corner? Okay, so new, and then it brings up a list of all your people. Um, so, oh wow. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here. So Nancy, if I can be clear, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Just a quick question. What you're doing, you created the source, you created the citation, and now you're adding a citation to a specific fact. Is that what you're doing? Correct. I'm adding it to an existing fact, okay? To an existing fact. To but an existing you, you, fact. Right, but you clicked on the new button because you're not, adding you're not creating a new citation you're creating a new link from the right. citation you just created to an existing fact is that what you're doing correct correct okay so this is linking a citation to a specific to an existing fact okay Got it. so so i'm going to go in here and I, I mean all the facts that are already in the tree are already in here they're all listed here. So you can attach this to anything. So I'm just gonna attach it to my, to my AKA. Now it is linked, okay? So when I go into, into me in the tree and go to the AKA, here is the citation. And then if I want to, and frankly, when I uh, need to go look at a citation, I don't do it from sources, from the sources workspace. I'm doing it from the person. I'm doing it because I have a specific question about a specific person and a specific source. So I, go, I just double click to open it. And then um, if it was an ancestry one, there would be a view source i'll show you but here so now i can go if this was a live link i can click on this and it will take me right to the website do you see this button right here so that'll take me straight to the website where i got the information and hope and pray fingers crossed that the website is still live because they do go so okay okay so let's go back to sources and i've got to go back to that could you say something about websites that go away Oh, websites come and go all the time. I mean, what the websites that we know, use, but... they do go, but this will take you to the website um, if it's still a good link. 
because I've encountered several recently. The only reason I bring it up is I'm so frustrated. One of the websites I use a lot um, is gone. So um, it just, it's a current frustration. All right. So, so when they when they move something from a, a regular address to an archive <laughs> address, for instance, obituaries or something like that, do you go in and change that on your records? Oh, I sure do. I sure do. I change the the web address. I change or I don't change the web address, but I definitely change the citation so that that is noted for anybody else who may be interested in looking at it. So I would put in something about something like that. Hey, Nancy, this is John. Hi, John. Uh, just one thing, if I'm going to use a web link for something that's not a major source like Ancestry or Google or mm -hmm. a newspaper that is going to be there forever, I will take that link and go over to archive.org and I will archive it and then use that archive link that is created. And that will be there um, pretty much forever as long as the billions of references on archive.org are live. I'll use that for like a family history page or local historical society or something that could easily uh, fall off uh, when someone goes back to look for that. I, yeah, I agree. Um, um, it's, uh, it's, Keeping, keeping, keeping track of of when websites are archived and um, and then when web or things are moved, like at archives. dot com, for example, one of my things I found it was moved on archives, and so the website was 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 just a little bit different. I had to edit the web address just a little bit. Um, so those are things to note. Um, if you if you happen to notice it, make sure you you address that in your citation, so that you know when you go back in citation, or that others who may be looking at your tree, they would know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a couple things about that. You know, it's like well, find a grave. What a year, a couple of years ago, they redid their website. And I know they kept the old links active that that go over to the new link, but I think since then that's been discontinued. That yeah. if you can store the information on how to find it, you know, and find a grave, well, they've got the memorial ID. Yeah. Um, other things is you can actually art, you can self archive, you know, basically essentially take a snapshot of a web page itself. Yeah. And keep oh, that I... for a record. So. But, but, but yeah, as far as being able to provide the information for someone else to find it, it's, you know, you would eventually have to change the address, so. I do this screenshot quite a bit so that I can attach Me that too. as media to my citation. And yeah, that way we'll, people we'll can address see what that. Yeah, we'll, we'll address that. I mean, that is, taking be, being knowing how to take screenshots comes in handy so much um, because you can take screenshots of photos you can take screenshots of photos on 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 Facebook even you can um, take screenshots of, of something like um, anything that you want to go back to you can take a screenshot of it stash it on your desktop and then and then you can go back into it later or if um, if you want to screenshot if you want an article that you found online you can take a screenshot of that and add it as media to your citation and we'll get to that in just a second um, so uh, guide 1.4 screenshot it's not complicated and it will enhance your research like you wouldn't believe. So um, 
So you don't have to type out that article. You can take a screenshot and add it as media instead. Or you don't have to type out the, tra the transcription. You can take a screenshot and, and add it as media instead. Okay, so now let's talk about media, okay? So let's add media to this citation. Um, let's go down here and you can add the media from here. And you go to, you go, if, if it is not already an FTM, then it, then you use new. If it is already an FTM, then you use link to existing. You use link to existing. Should I say that again? Because this is like super, super important. If it is, if it is not in FTM yet, use add as new. If it is already in FTM, then you would use link to existing. Any questions about, well, let me, let me, let me go into a little bit more detail. So if you use link to existing for something that is not already in FTM, then it will just, it will link it to that place where that image, where that, where you have saved that image and it won't save it in FTM because it won't be included in the manual backup. So, because it's not in FTM. So, um, any, please ask any questions about this because this is really, really important because this is not just about adding media to citations, it's also about adding media to anywhere in FTM. Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to add that screenshot I showed you earlier, just because it's convenient. Um, I'm going to add new media because it's not in FTM. So I'm gonna add new media and then my screen comes up where I saved it. That's just on my desktop. There you go. So now I would right click rename and I can do okay there you go now if you take screenshots of of say a photo or something like that I just want to toss this in here if you take a if you're using a screenshot that's a photo of something or screen or a screenshot of a photo um, or anything else. Um, I don't use date. Um, this is where you should add it. So if this was a photo of that I obtained from my photo hints on Ancestry, then I type something like obtained or photo. Um, Bob, we take everything off of Wi-Fi. Thank you. Um, photo um, added to Ancestry by, um, I'll just use my, my name on today's date. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's what that's what I would do. So I mean, that's just an example. Obviously, not relevant, but just an example um, of you can where you can add additional details about this as it's being added to the citation. That's where I would add those details. But um, and you can also add it to one of your categories here. So I can add it. To that, for example, I'm not going to, but um, I'll never find it. Um, 
but and then you just click okay oh note this is where that this image is now stored it is now in my in my tree media in the default folder so mine is users nancy document family tree maker the story of us master tree the tree name and then it's the tree media Are you able to also change the caption description? Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Um, okay, now, so now this citation has that media. This is where this is the other option is going to show you where you can add the media. We have so many options for adding media. It's just crazy. You can double click on the citation and add your media here. Or you can do it when you are creating the citation. So I just went up and added a new citation. So, but I wanted to show you, you can add it in several different places. Um, so, and you would do this one, the same, attach new media. If it's not already in FTM, if it's already in FTM, you would link to existing. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do one that's already existing. We have several options here. We can do all, we can do all the photos or all the stories. And I have one in there. So we're going to go up here because it's way, this is how I usually find media that is linked already to someone else. Um, so I go in here to person find the person. Unfortunately, we don't have a search in this. And that is something that Matt Kiev knows that we want. So I'm going to go in here. All of these people have media. That's what this icon means. It means there's media link. So I can go into any of these people and just and just pick one. So hers is good enough. There you go. It's in there. And then you can go into the media details and you can add everything that you want. And again, here is, this is the file name and here is where it's located. Let me make this screen a little bit bigger for you. Let's see if I can get that. Nope, here, let's try this. Oh, we can't move that, that, that screen, but there you go. You can get it highlighted. So that's your file name. This is the location. And you always want to make sure that this location is the tree media. That's how you know you've added it right. Any questions? Please, if you have questions, please ask. Did you put the location in like that or does Family Tree do that? I put it in because I manually added it. But if okay. we go back up to census, I'm sorry, I'm not responding. This is not yeah. the time for FTM to act up. I got things <laughs> to do. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. So let's go into, we'll just go into a census since we're all familiar with those. Oh, come on, just, FPM. Nancy, can I just ask how you did find the media item? I'm sorry, can you say that again? How, where did you click to do find media item? Oh, okay. So so here link to existing is that what you're talking about one that's already in FTM? is that what you're referring to all right yes please okay yeah. so you just click link to existing 
And then I, you can do it by media category. So there's all my media category. So I can go in and if I want to go find a newspaper article, for example, or a passport, because I have them all by name. Um, or I, I can't see where you clicked originally to get that find the media item. Okay, so okay, so double click on so go into citation and then click on your media tab and then click on link to oh. existing. Right. Oh, okay, and it comes up. Okay. You got it? Yes, you thank you. Oh, it's okay. just you had to, you were going a bit fast. I'm sorry, I'll try to slow down. Sorry, my apologies. I tend to do that. So please, if you need me to slow down, please, please, please let me know. Okay, any other questions about, about this and FTM just, okay, there we go. Is screenshot a separate program or how do you do a screenshot? Please, um, please go to guide 1.4 after the meeting. It explains it in detail. It's straight from Windows or straight from Mac. The instructions are on there. So it's not something that we can tell you detailed step by step because it's, um, it, it's multi-step. And it all depends on the software that you're using, whether you're using Paint 3D or um, that kind of thing. So um, if you're using Snip and Sketch, if you're Mac or Windows, so, um, so Guide 1.4 has all the details. And then you can ask any questions in the guide if you want to, if you, if you still have questions. So um, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so I'm going to go now adding to a fact that does not exist yet adding the citation to a fact that does not exist um so if i go into me and i add um oh we'll just add title, title um then i can go to here use existing source type source citation and then i can go in and just pick one of those and i can link to citation or i can create a new copy um we're going to link to citation for the just for this portion okay now this there's the citation for my new fact any questions Would you repeat that, please, Nancy? I believe I sure will. Okay, so you you choose the fact, and we'll I'll choose another title fact, and then once you have that fact, because you already have the citation available, we're going to use existing. You can add a new source citation from here, but we're going to use existing source citation, and I'll just pick that one. And then I'm going to link to citation. And then it's all there, including the media. Need me to do it again? Well, there's quite a lag on your screen. So when you <laughs> click on things, by the time yeah, you're talking I'm about sorry. it, it isn't there yet. Sorry. Anybody need me to do that again? Or do you have any questions? You know, my, my frustration with doing that is when I go back in to do to link and then all my sources start with ancestry.com, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I can't find what I want to attach it to. When you down, when you merge it from, from ancestry, 
it will merge it to the facts that you chose during the merge. So you don't have to choose anything. It does it for you. It's a completely automated um, way of doing things. Now, I will say that, I will say that my citations, or uh, my citations do not include all the ancestry, blah, 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 blah. So this uh, is just- That's what I'd like to know how to do. Yep, I do it because ancestry is narcissistic. Um, <laughs> so I don't need all that everywhere. I've got my ancestry down here um, in my reference. I have the ancestry website. I made sure that was included. So I just, I, to me, it just, yeah, it, it just, I don't see the point in all that ancestry ancestry ancestry.com it just seems like too much so i the way i look at it is i viewed the image on ancestry but that is not where i can find the image or find the record that's where i can find the image but that's just how i do it so um so let's can see. you show me how you edit those yeah, I just do it right here, right here in this citation detail. Sorry, right. Yep. Okay, there's a lag. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. You do it in citation detail. Yeah, I do it in the citation. I because, see. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, because you, I mean, in the merge, you can edit the citation to a degree, but you can't get rid of all the ancestry stuff. So you still have to edit it a little bit. Um, but um, but yeah, this is this is where you can edit your citation at any time. You can also edit your source if you want to use this little um, pencil icon. I'll leave my cursor up here. I'll actually move it around a little bit until the lag. I am so sorry, guys. My, my Wi-Fi was great, like 30 minutes before I started this, so. Okay, do you see my cursor over here? So let me, let me make my cursor a little bit more obvious. And then I'm moving it over here to the edit source button. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay, so you edit. And this is where you can edit your source. Like if you decide that you don't want Ancestry as the repository, then you go in and you can edit your repository here. Um, you can edit your repository. Oh, crud. And now it's going to try to fix it for all those. Give it just a second. Or you can add a new one. And, and you'll be adding a lot of new ones as you research. And, you know, you find a new record that you've never seen before. You'll need to add a new repository when you add that source. If it is different repository, than one you've already you've already gotten. Okay. Any questions? I'm I'm sorry to ask another one, but um, and I just went into my ancestry. Okay, I still have a lot of the census are under residents, so they don't pop up as census. You know, they're all under residents, residents, residents. So right. when you go and you, um, so they do need to have a new source created to get rid of residents or no. to do the source. And no, no, no. The, the residents is a fact. Um, I don't use, I don't use residents. So that's why you saw census in mine. But um, when you merge it, 
into, when you sync it into, into Family Tree Maker, it will also be residents. That is the, that is the, the fact resident, they use resident kind of almost as a generic fact. That is my opinion. Um, so I don't use any residence facts in my tree at all. But when you think that, it will show up as residence in Family Tree Maker as well. Is Does that answer your question? You do, you do manually go in and change all the automatic residences into census. I do. I do. After every merge, when I go to clean up, you know, what I merge and move any details to my notes or whatever. Yeah, that's when I change my residence back to something I feel is more appropriate. You change them in Tree Maker rather than creating new facts in Ancestry. It's easier to change them in Family Tree Maker. I don't think so. Well, I think it's just as easy in Ancestry. You can create custom facts in Ancestry. Um, so, in so you can you can change your residence facts to census in Ancestry if you want, and then they'll sync to FTM as census facts. Going either direction, it works. It works great. Okay, so for you, you don't have a preference. You'll change, create the census fact in Ancestry or in FTM. You don't have a preference of either one personally. Well, personally, I have a preference of FTM because I do all my all my work is in FTM. I don't use Ancestry for re, for entering any data. I use them for access to records, I use them for DNA, I use them for messaging, um, but I don't use them for entering any data. I sync everything to Ancestry, but I don't use them to enter any data. I haven't since I learned how to use FTM. I just find okay, FTM thank you. easier. I just find that FTM is easier to to manipulate the data and you're doing it your own way. And I just I just find it easier like once I learned FTM. That took a couple years because I didn't have guides. All I had was a companion guide, which is just an overview. So that's why I did the guides for all of you. But um, but um, once I learned FTM. I found it easier to research in FTM. Just opinion. Okay, now um, you can also add notes to a citation. I don't generally add notes here. I have a tendency to add them um, in my person notes, um, but you may want to put a note in. Let me go back up to. No. There it is. Okay. So you can go in here. Let's, there we go. No, this one has the links. And you can go in here in notes and you can add a, a note. Um, this may be where you want to add that. Um, Okay, so, um, and that will be linked to your citation. It will be in the notes for the citation. And those notes are for you. Those do not sync. Any questions? Okay, do you need me to, um, oh, I was gonna go back up here. Let's go up here, back up to census. Let's pick a big one. Okay, 1930 census. Let me get this one back over. Okay, in FTM, you will have a census for an entire family, right? 
or at least all the people that are that were um, on that census. So I have a lot of people in this one, for example, or a lot of facts. It's linked to two people, but a lot of facts. I'll let my screen catch up. Okay, can everybody see all these links now? I can. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so when I merged this record, I linked it to all of these facts for both of these people. Now, this is because I work in FTM. I can do this for big families. Um, where the entire family, here's 19 links. You are linking citations to facts, not to people. So again, you're linking citations to facts, not people. That's important to remember. I, it took me a while to wrap my brain around that distinction. Um, so, when I merge this, this uh, particular census record, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. Um, this is linked to 19 facts, not people. So you can see here the facts that I, that I um, linked the census to. And that's all in one citation. For those of you who like to work in on Ancestry instead, you will wind up, you, if you look at your citations, you'll have a citation for every person, per person, rather than an FTM, we have it per family. When you sync to, if, when you sync to FTM, they all gonna sync down per person. So um, just be aware that your citations are going to look, a your links are going to look a little bit different. They'll just be for just one person's facts. So they'll look a little bit more like, like this one. Nancy, I'm sorry. I have another question. If on oh, that don't same... Apologize. On that same census page, there is another family. Do you link them to this very same citation or do you oh. like put them in a no. different citation? No, each family gets its own citation. So if grandma lives down the street, yep. I would make another citation for grandma. Yeah, she's right. a different address on a different page. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's um, if the, if you have, I have one where it was pretty much the entire side of a block um, was my family. So I, you know, you had the parents and then you had their kids all living on the same street. It was crazy. Um, so, but each one of those households gets a different citation. So it's per household. In FTM, if you're working in Ancestry, it will still be per person. So if you set it up that way in FTM, when you link to Ancestry and update again, will it bring it back down the way it had it? So I don't. I don't do any any research. I don't do any um, data entry in Ancestry at all. So so I do it all in FTM. I merge the record and everything in FTM. Um, when I merge the record, the uh, and the Ancestry citation comes with it, and um, I just clean it up a little bit. And uh, but. Um, in the merge, you select which facts you want attached, the census attached to. Did I answer your question? Thank you. 
Yeah, per household for citations. If you're working in FTM, never, never, never use the same. You can use the image. You can still use the same image. You can link to existing if you wanted, if you're doing it manually. If not, just let Ancestry give you another image. That's the way I do it. It's not really a duplicate. I name it, I name it for that person. I name it for head of household with the head of household. Okay. Any other questions? Do I need to go through anything again? If I do, please, please, please say so. I have a very basic question because this is all new to me. Where are these guides that you're referring to or how do we access them? Uh, who's talking? I can't see. Who, I'm sorry, I can't I'm sorry, see this is Kathy. Oh, hi, Kathy. Um, uh, they're in the group. Just click guides up at the top of the group. Actually, click on featured first and go down to the last post. Um, and down the last post will show you where to access the guides and how to complete guide one, the required guide one. Um, and that and Thank that you. will also point you to the screenshot one. That's in guide one. Okay, so Thank I'm going to show. You. Oh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Does guide fourteen address cleaning up census and merging from ancestry to here uh, to FTM? Is there something in guide four specifically on census records? Uh, no. Are you talking about duplicate census records? Are you talking yes, about duplicate Yes, like citations? if you wanted to get it like yours, one per family versus individual. Do you work on Ancestry or in FTM? I have exclusively working in Ancestry, but I wanted to take this to figure out if maybe I'm going to switch to doing it all in FTM instead. Okay, so if it's I'm an FTM, maybe I will. if it's an FTM, then you will merge your duplicate in citations into one, you will merge each family member into one citation. Um, it's called replace, but it's basically just merging them, just like you would merge duplicate people or duplicate facts. That is covered in guide 14. And again, if you have any questions during that process, you can just ask a question in the guide and it will pop up to the top of the group and someone will respond as soon as possible. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a neat, simple way to do your find a grave citations because, because you won't get a citation when you merge from find a grave. So um, I'm, I saved one for you to show you. Um, so there she is. Okay, so Kathleen, I have a find a grave hint. Oh, I did have a find a grave hint. Let's see. Well, nope. Uh, I'm sorry, a little discombobulated here. New search. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. Am I going too fast? This is how this is how you search records in 
um, in FTM. You go to publish and then and then you can search. There she is. Okay. Okay, so that's the record I want. And this is all you get, right? Now you can edit. That's what I want. I'm trying to go slow to make sure. Let me start this again. Okay, gonna <laughs> let my Wi Fi catch up. I'm sorry, guys, I don't know why it's going so slow. It was fantastic. Um, okay, so I click on the little pencil icon right here next to the line I want to edit. And I can I can edit this before I merge the record. Oops, no, I do not want to discard that. Okay, and, and this you while you're doing this, you can add a description here if you want to, that kind of thing. And I'll go ahead and edit this now. One last thing to worry about in a minute. Merge. Okay, and this looks very similar to what you guys see on Ancestry. Um, and that's all I want. And so I'm discarding, I'm not keeping anything as alternate. Okay, and next. And norm and, and any other record, I would go in here and edit my citation and make sure that I have it the way I want it. And in fact, let's move her up here. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. So now go back to Kathleen. Oh, I need to slow down. Okay. So here is the burial fact, just as I want it. Find a grave gives us nothing, so we have to do it ourselves. So you see this view source online button down here. I will slow down here. You see this view source online? Mm -hmm. You click on this. This is inside the citation. I double clicked on the citation here. It opened. I can go to view source online. It opens up my browser and should go right to family uh, find a grave unless my browser wants to misbehave too boy come on let me close that out come on there it goes okay there we go okay so I like to go straight into the memorial. Nancy, we're still seeing just your family tree maker. I don't know if you're just sharing your family tree maker or your entire screen. We're not. Okay, I'm gonna give it a minute because I'm in find a grave in my browser. I, I swear I tested this. I tested my, uh, my Wi-Fi speed. So I'm sorry there's so much of a lag. <clears throat> Let me know if you can see the memorial. You Not may yet. have to share your browser screen. Yeah, okay. Let me let me go back into this. Okay. One thing that might give you more bandwidth is to turn off your video. Just do the sharing. Yeah, I might do that. Okay, so it, that's a good idea. Um, so here's the memorial. Um, I hate writing citations myself. I hate it. So this one, this one we can view source or 
if you don't want to click on that, you just want to scroll down to the bottom of the memorial. And nope, it doesn't show it. We have to click on view source. Okay. So view source. There is all of your source information. Can are you caught up with me? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, we, we we see it now at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Would you so, would you go, would you go through those steps again, please? I'm sorry. Oh no, it's okay. So I just opened the memorial. And I clicked view source right here, right next to the memorial ID. View source. Okay. That's a link. I see that. And it goes right down to the source. Um, in, awesome. I, Thank you. I, you're welcome. I am in Firefox, so I can just right click I, I i can just click on this and it will highlight it in uh when i'm using chrome i actually have to drag and hold to highlight it you know take my mouse or curse and drag it to highlight it um and then i just right click and copy then stop share Then I go back to, I go back to Family Tree Maker. Okay, all right. And then I just paste. And then you have your whole citation, although that errant period, that space before the period drives me crazy. Okay, can you see this, the, where I have the citation yeah. now? And you have your whole citation right there. That's all you need. So, so view source, and then, and then copy that entire citation that, that they have down there, and then paste it into your citation, and you're done. Unless you want to add, you know, the photos or a screenshot, which you can add right here as media. You know, where you can add notes. So Nancy, there's been a little to. discussion about this on the group, but I think all the steps you just did can be done within the web merge window mm -hmm. without leaving FTM. And you can download the photos you can copy the text of a memorial and you can uh, copy the headstone and merge them all in one uh, swoop from within web merge. Web merge, web merge does not uh, merge the citation. It does not merge. Right, that but source. you can copy that. You can copy that text from within the web merge window. You can. And put it you into the, put it into it the citation. I do it this way because it works with my workflow because I would also take the um, picture of her from the memorial and I would take the headstone and I would add both to the media um, and I would use the um, photo of her as her profile picture. Yeah, it really right. does. And what I was indicating was that you can get those photos and headstones within the web merge yeah, and merge them can, at the same time if you, if you want. If you prefer to do it separately, you can do it If separately. you want to do it that way. But I mean, it, they won't. Um, when you use web merge, um, you do have to add those manually. Um, you, they will not merge those. You do still have to add them manually. So I just wanted to make that clear. Whether you do it, whether you do it when you and uh, when you do the initial merge, and you add your media then, um, but I do it after because I like to look at the memorial. I I don't know. It just this is my workflow, and so this is the way I do it. But yes, you certainly can do it beforehand. 
So I just wanted to show you that neat trick so you don't have to worry about, uh, oh, and I just want to point out, it does include when I access the memorial. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it also includes when the memorial was created, I believe. Uh, nope, it doesn't include that, but that's okay. It includes when, um, when I accessed it. So nice little thing in there. So you don't have to worry about adding, there's nothing you have to add to this unless you want to. And you can add other details here, or you can add, you can type in the memorial itself. You can type in those details here if you'd like, or take a screenshot, add it as media, whatever you'd like to do at that point. Okay. So then I would just go in and add my date and add um, and I'm going and I add the cemetery to the place. So I go in and add all those other details. So that's why I do that's why I do it. That's why my workflow works that way. It's because I go in and do all these other details anyway. So I just wanted to make sure that y'all had that, that neat little trick. So any questions, any other comments? Oh, there's one without a citation. Oh, make a note of that. Yikes. Okay, anyway. Yep, mine aren't perfect either. <laughs> I've got one here with no citation. It's like, how did I do that? But anyway, okay. So those are, I do, I do scroll through every once in a while and find those sometimes. Oops. But anyway. Okay. Nancy, I'm, if you're going straight to find a grave rather than accessing it via Ancestry, is would you just create your source from scratch? So and you can also, merge. if you do that and later you use the Ancestry merge, is that going to create two copies of the source? Um, yes, it will probably create two copies of Find a Grave Source. Um, and you can just merge those or it's called replace, but you can just merge those into one. Okay. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with creating them manually when you can just merge it from Ancestry. And are you gonna address that pretty soon? Uh, which? Uh, how to use the replace and merge. Oh, if you have a duplicate, well, that's covered in guide 14. Um, okay, thank you. I'll just do that. Oh, you're here. welcome. Okay, so. It's really easy. Okay, I'm going to let my screen catch up a little bit for you. Okay. Should have this going to you here shortly. I'm waiting for the notification. Let me know if you can see that I have two meeting test sources. I I can see it. Yes, okay. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Two. Didn't get the notification. These little symbols right here along the edge. This means there are citations attached. So if you have any that are empty like this and don't have any, any citations, you can right click and you can delete the source, but we're not gonna do that. Okay, 
So here I have two duplicate sources, okay? I just put the two on it just so you could see it for the for this. Um, and like I said, this is covered in guide 14, <coughs> but I'm gonna show it to you here. So I right click and then on the source that I don't want to keep, it's just easier for me that way. I right click on the source I don't want to keep manage sources then i have to go find meeting test so that's the one i want to keep so i'm going to then click replace oh i'm sorry it's been a while since i've done this okay starting over i am so so sorry okay so i click on manage sources and then I go to, I click on the one I don't want to keep. And then I go up to replace. I'm going really slow here just to make sure. <clears throat> okay, replace. Then I'm going to, and here's the one I want to keep meaning test. So, and I always read this really, really carefully just to make sure that I'm doing what I want it to do, right? I, do I want to replace it? Yes. And then close. And now I have one. That's just meeting test. That's all it is. Oh, wow. Thanks. You're welcome. Like I said, it is covered in uh, guide 14. Any other questions? We got a couple more minutes left. Yes, clarification. If meeting test one had a father's name and meeting test two had a mother's name, even though that, that button says replace, not merge, it would end up having both the mother and father together. Right. Let me um, let me add a citation, um, and I'm going to do um, mother, and I'm going to do mother. Uh, no, hang on. I need a new source first. Uh, sorry. Of course, there are exceptions. Okay, I'm gonna let my screen catch up here a little bit so that you can see that I have citations now in meeting test two, and then in, and then we still have the citations. In um, meaning test, okay. Okay, so the IRS. Okay, so somebody needs to mute the their microphone. Um, okay, is everybody with me? Can you see yes, father yes. and mother citations? Okay, so okay, yes. so I'm just gonna manage sources. And then I'm going to find the one I don't want to keep. The one I don't want to keep. And then I'm going to replace. And I'm going really slow on purpose. Okay, replace. And then I'm going to choose meaning test because that's the one I want to keep. And then I'm going to click OK. And are you sure you want to replace meeting test two with meeting test? Yes, I am. And close. Meeting test. So all the citations come with it. 
so it it merges all the citations so if you have duplicate census for a, for example and you've got let's say 100 citations in one and you've got 300 in the other you'll choose the one that has the 100 and then you will do the and then you will replace you'll choose the one that has the 360 or whatever. Um, and then you, and you'll choose that one and click OK. Nancy, question? Sure. Um, is like in, in this case where you merged, is the repository associated with the source title or the so citation? The reason I ask that is if I've got two apparent duplicate sources, and one has one repository and one has another, how will they merge? Uh, that I don't know. I've never tested that. I don't know if it pops up with an error. So, But is, is repository associated with the source title? It is, it, it is with the source, yeah. Okay. Um, I have that in a couple of situations, so I'm just trying to figure out what the best thing to do is. Okay, so I'm going to add myself as a repository on that one. Okay, and then I'll add um, I'll add uh, I'm just trying to pick something that isn't huge. I'll go with that one. Okay. Okay. So we have we have this one here for this one for this this repository. It's over here in the right side panel. Wait for y'all to catch yep. up. Okay. And then in this one, oh. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, source repository. Why didn't that show up? I guess I need to give it a minute. Have a repository in there. Perhaps because you don't have a source citation. No. Oh, yeah, this one. That's right. Now. Well, I'll enter one in here. We'll just do the same we did before. There it is. Okay, just took it a minute to show up. So I have myself okay. as a repository there. I have this this one here. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Good question. Okay, this is the one I don't want to keep. Right. Okay, so replace. Let's see what happens. Okay, meeting test and okay. And yes, I want to replace that. Close. Wow. Huh. And it, so it kept the one of the, it kept the repository of the one that I wanted to keep. Right, not the other. So you've lost that information. So you've lost that repository. Right. So there can only be one. There no, can only I understand. be one repository. So you, if you're going to merge those, you'd have to record it under detail or something about another repository. Or you keep them as separate sources. Or keep them as separate sources. No, nope. that's probably yeah. what I would do. That's probably Understand. what I would do. Yeah. Thank you. That was helpful. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else have any more questions? Yes, I do. This is Jeannie. Um, I see that you've got something called Millennium File under your source groups. What is oh, a millennium yeah. file, please? <laughs> it's a it's actually a source I intend to get rid of. Oh. Um, it's they don't really have much information. Um, and um, I have been replacing 
these sources. I, I actually have other, on some of these, they've have their, these are the ones I have left that I haven't found other sources for them. I don't like the Millennium file. I just don't. Okay, they I've just never don't heard of have it. enough information. But this is oh. actually one I'm going to get rid of. This was a Ancestry. This was on oh. Ancestry. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm new and I had to leave for part of the meeting. So the question may have already been answered or it's not part of this. My question is, and because I'm new, I've used, so for a source title, sometimes I've used like my, um, say my aunt gave me the information my living aunt. So I made my aunt the source title. Is that okay? Um, you, yeah, sure. I mean, you can have anything be a source title. Um, I try to do things that I know that I can use later. Um, well, like this one. Um, so I have a personal holding. Um, I was given this marriage certificate. I was given this obituary um, and I was given this birth certificate and these two death certificates. So the, this is my father-in-law, this is his father and then my grandmother and my grandfather. So those were given to me. So I have myself as a, uh, for this as personal holdings I do intend to go back in and put in the repository and and um, and change my um, citation to include the the actual repository for these certificates, Cook County, Illinois. Um, so, um, and then I have another one that's personal knowledge. Um, so I have this one here. You can see this one. I'll just pull this open so you can see it. Um, so, um, so you can see here where I stated that Arnold Parent, which I actually should have put in here, um, his um, birth year, you know, something, I can't remember it, but uh, something like uh, 1940. This is how I do it. That's how it should have been. Um, so this was told to me. Okay. So you use personal knowledge then as the source and then the citation details will be what will make them unique. Right. And I can add all kinds of stuff underneath this. Um, so, um, so this was as told to me by my father, James Walter Newell. And again, I should have added. Yes. Oh, well, okay. But Nancy, could James Walter Newell be your source? And then your citations be the facts associated with what he told you? He could. I could have done it that way, but I would only be using that source for that one particular, that one particular thing. And mm -hmm. I still would have to have a citation. I see. Thank okay. you. And that's why I asked because it was becoming messy. <laughs> yeah. And I thought yeah. there's got to be a better and, way to do this. <laughs> and your, and the, any of these details that, that you have in your citation should not go in the source title. So you shouldn't have, you know, that um, you shouldn't have Elmer E. Chris Jr. marriage certificate as your source title. You could, I could have Elmer E. Chris Jr. as a source title or Elmer Chris or Murda Christina Strom as a, as a source, but that's just not how I like to do it because I like to do it so that Again, my source is unchanging. It's a citation. Mm -hmm. So, and so this one, the source is unchanging. It's only the citations that change. So I like to keep it as general as I can so I can keep using it. I like that, thank you. Just as an example. 
Any other questions? I, I would just like to add that if you do use a person name for a source, um, according to evidence explained, you know, technically you can't, you shouldn't use like just Aunt Edna as a source. Well, one, because she's not going to be around forever. Uh, two, go. and technically it should be like, say, like interview or phone conversation with Aunt Edna on such and such a date. Um, and that that's um, according to evidence explained, if you do cite a person for like personal knowledge, you should always include the date or, you know, it's like or notes while taking while talking to or recording of or, you know, just just make sure you include the date that it took place. So, yeah, that's good. That's good to add. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes it'll have to be left blank because I just wrote notes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you'll once I get the video uploaded, you'll be able to watch this again if you'd like, and you can you know fast forward through it and rewind it or pause it. So it'll just take me a couple hours to get it uploaded. No, not I'm in no rush, so that's fine. Thank you very much for answering that question, though, and, and for adding that additional detail, like phone call or whatever. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, going back to media, I saw that you, what you took was very clear to read. Sometimes when you get a piece of media and a document and stuff, it's not easy to read. Is there something in FTM that can help me make it clearer? Sure. Um, so... If when you have a, a media item, well, you have two options. Um, you could, well, let's go back here. Okay, so with the media, um, if it is not clear, this particular image, this particular image is, but if it wasn't, I would type it all out in this description field. That's how I do it. Um, and then that stays with the media. So if somebody else wants to use that picture in their tree, this, this, descript, this description will stay. It's the same thing when you use a photograph and then it's in, in photo hint, this description stays with the media. So that's where I put it. Um, you, another option would be putting it into the citation text. That's another thing that a lot of users do. And I think that's what the professionals do. Well, you, what I was concerned about it because I saw something when you had the document that said dark room. So I thought oh, perhaps you could do some kind of manipulation. You can. Okay, I'm going into the media section right now. So that I can I can show you this a little bit better. So and I'll show you. Let me show you on something that you will use a lot. Okay. Let me go back here. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna double click on the media. And now now you can see photo dark room. Mm -hmm. And yes. this is this is pretty cool. Um, again, this is addressed in the in the guides too. So, so this particular image was terrible. Um, so, you can try like light repair <clears throat> that helped. Um, you can do a um, instead of light repair, you can do moderate. Let me see. You can do intensive, which is pretty dark. We're not getting very far on this image. And then when you click on advanced settings, are you all with me or am I going too fast? No, no I'm good. Let's see. Okay. With you. So you can adjust the brightness. You can adjust the contrast. You can adjust the saturation. So let's go back up here. You can adjust the saturation for that works great for photos. 
or for, you know, a colored background. Um, and then of course you have sharpness. So you have all the same controls that you would have in a photo software. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yep, thank you. So yeah, you can do that. Let's go back here. And here you can, um, you can open the file here. You can change, you can rotate it left or right here, which comes in handy if you, if you get an image that's that direction. And you need to turn it this way. Oh, didn't go, didn't click the right one, sorry. So um, you can use a magnifier tool how cool is this? I use this a lot. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? It's better it than, is. It it's is. easier to use than the, um, than the magnifier that is free with, um, free with uh, windows that I use all the time. You can, you have an option to size to fit. You have a one-to-one -one actual size, makes it a lot oh. easier to see it. And then you also have a, you also have zoom. You can zoom it, so you can go down to 25%. You can go up to 100% so that you can see the image. So we have all okay. these, you can, um, and it shows you that it's linked to 19, 1900 fact already. Um, but we have a lot of controls in FTM to be able to see our images. So. Yep, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're out of time, everybody. So thank you for, thank you for joining me. And I hope that I helped to clear everything up a little bit for you. I'm hoping. Yes, a ton. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. So much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Oh, much. I learned welcome. a lot. Thanks, Nancy. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you from the UK. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.